Welcome, 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 everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to be here, and we're going to get started right away. So I'm going to introduce Cami, who's going to be guiding you through our Microsoft workshop today. Cami, uh, let's get us rolling. All right. So hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, we are indeed uh, tonight doing a workshop on Microsoft Teams, the basics. This is like 101. You're brand new to Teams or you're new to Teams and you maybe haven't clicked under all the buttons. And we're going to do that in our uh, first session here tonight. So my name is Cami Kanikins and I'm coming to you from Alberta. My role here, uh, my day job is an instructional coach. I work in a school district in southern Alberta and I live on just the border between Treaty 4 and 7 ter uh, territory in this area. And so we're going to be uh, going through Microsoft Teams tonight. I'm going to be leading us through that. I'd like to introduce you to Coulter. Hello, everybody. My name is Coulter Lewis. I'm chiming in today from Toronto, Ontario. And my role right now in education is a uh, K to, or grade two to grade eight uh, coding and um, educational technology teacher at my school. So uh, I'm excited to be a part of our team's workshops over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and we've got lots of information for you. And I will be providing a lot of things. Well, not too many things, but I'll be providing some things in our chat. So you'll see right now, I've just sent through a link for today's workshop. You can save that link and make a copy for yourself. So you can follow along with the resources during or after our, our workshop and keep this for your records. And I will provide a few more links throughout. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to use the chat function there in our YouTube channel and ask the questions. It'll come through to me and I will be able to respond throughout our workshop. And yeah, I, I'm really excited for what Cami has to offer for us today. All right. So we like to at Cobblestone, oh, and Coulter and I, uh, we'll get to that. We like to start off with a treaty, uh, a land acknowledgement. And so I would like to acknowledge that where I work, uh, my school board is located within the boundaries of Treaty 4 and Treaty 7. And this land is the ancestral and traditional territory of the Siksika, the Kainai, the Pakani, the Stony Nakoda, and the Tsutina people. Uh, those are the Treaty 7 folks, as well as the Cree, the Sioux, and the Sotobans of the Ojibwa. And of course, Métis throughout both of those treaty areas. We would like to acknowledge the traditional knowledge holders and the elders who've gone before us and those who are still with us today. And we are particularly grateful um, for their stewardship of the lands and the water. And um, I have a picture of one of my favorite prairie items. And uh, I think about our First Nations uh, forebears and how they really lived off the land. And this is called the prickly pear cactus. And you can see uh, the pink one is in June when it flowers. And now in September, pretty soon these pink berry or these pink flowers will turn into little cactus berries and I'm going to go out in about a week or two and uh, pick some cactus berries off of those pincushion cactuses for me it's just a hobby but I think about our our uh, forefathers who really relied on those and so we're grateful for that knowledge that we have from them culture and I both are coming to you from the cobblestone collective and so you maybe have done some work with us before uh, we are contract workers and we do lots of work with Microsoft and Google through Co Cobblestone Collective, and we love to learn with teachers and students across the land. And we are a Microsoft Canada global training partner. And so we are giving a special thanks to Microsoft Canada, who's making this a free session available to everybody today. And so let's uh, take a look at what's going to happen. We're actually going to do a four series session that's going to come up. And the first one is tonight, the basics of Microsoft Teams. And this is going to be like, um, it's like you're apartment hunting and you're testing things out. You're looking around, you're opening in all the doors and seeing, seeing what's there. And then the next one uh, that we're going to do actually right after this one tonight is a deeper dive. What does it look like inside? We're going to get into what it looks like inside the classroom, how to use it as a, a classroom tool. And then I think it's the next two Mondays after that, two more sessions. If you haven't signed up for those, uh, hopefully you'll come back with us. So today is all about Teams. Uh, we're going to look at all the things that we can do inside of Teams as it's kind of the, a big tool. And then when we would use Teams, why would we use Teams, some best practices along the way. And then in the next session, we're going to really dig into Teams 
in the classroom as a classroom tool. So we're going to touch on that a little bit in this first session, but that's going to come, that deeper dive into the classroom part is going to come um, in about an hour. So the first thing we need to do is be able to get you to Teams. And so we know that some of you are probably new to even the whole Microsoft environment. And so perhaps you've spent a lot of time in Google or another learning system. And so we're going to work on getting you to Teams. And so did you know that Teams has, or sorry, that Microsoft Office has a waffle? So if you're already in maybe um, an Outlook email program or any other, like a, any other online program, there's a waffle. The Microsoft waffle is in the top left-hand corner. Unlike that other waffle that's in the top right hand corner. So lots of people say, Microsoft has a waffle. I didn't know that. Well, they do. Uh, but even before you might find that waffle, to get to that waffle, we would recommend that you go to portal.office.com. And when you go to portal.office.com, you will get something that says, Hi, welcome to Teams. Or welcome to Office. I keep saying that. So um, if you wanted to switch over to that other screen, Coulter. All right, so portal.office.com, uh, you'll get something that says good afternoon and it'll probably have your name, good afternoon, Cami. I'm just in a, a test account here or a, a training account, so it doesn't say that, but it'll, it'll welcome you by name. And then down the left-hand side, you'll have a row of icons and you'll see that Microsoft waffle on in the top corner. And so we wanna give you just a moment to get into Teams with us. So Coulter, let's go back to that portal.office.com address on the other screen. There we go. And I've popped the link in the chat if anyone finds it easier just to copy and paste the link. Good over. idea. And if you could let us know, actually, in that YouTube chat, if you're in and you've got those office tabs or those office apps all sitting there waiting for you to pick one, um, if, if some of you can just let us know that you're in and you're you're there ready to go, that would be great. Give us a sense. We're, we're just going to give you a minute or two. And then we're going to keep on going there. But we want you to be able to get into Microsoft. For some new users, sometimes that's the hardest part is even finding how to get to Microsoft. Now, your school district might have um, some shortcuts set up. For example, in my school district, when I log on to my device, my Chromebook or my desktop, um, they have programmed a tab to come up so that Microsoft tab opens automatically. And I have that whole dashboard that I just showed you. I don't even have to go to the portal. It just comes up. And so depending on the school district that you're in, your school district might have already sent something, set something up like that for you. Okay. So portal.office.com, we are going to assume that you are in and ready to go. Okay, Natalie, use the waffle to get to Teams. Absolutely. So when you see all those icons, the Teams is purple bluish and it has a T for Teams. And so you can go ahead and click on that. And it will look something like this. Okay, so thank you, folks. We've got folks that are in and ready to go. That's super helpful. Great. Okay, so um, we're going to give a get a big tour of teams here. And one of the things we want to do is just kind of identify different parts. So right down the left hand side, we have a bunch of icons. And we sometimes call that the the me space. Those icons are um, specific to you. So if you click on the chat at the top, or the activity, that's your activity feed. If you click on the chat or the Teams or the calendar, those are items that are just for your account specifically. And then the big space in the middle um, where you see, uh, the I've got it labeled as WeSpace, that's where you're going to chat with your team. So 
the items that you would see in that big space in the middle typically are items that everybody would have access to, more or less. So that's kind of a neat way to think about how the Teams is organized, the me space and the we space. Uh, Coulter, I think we're going to go over to that other deck to get going. So I'm just going to switch over here. Kami, I love the me space and we space. I haven't used that one before. Yeah, so it, it, it kind of frames it well, I think. So there we go. We've got me space and we space. And so we are going to, uh, I'm going to just go into one of my teams. We're going to look at how to set this all up later. But I'm going to start um, in a team. Actually, I'm going to start. Actually, I'm going to go back here. Sorry, let's go back here. We're going to start at, just want to make sure. That I'm going in this order. Okay, we're going to start with the chat space. Actually, we'll even start at the top, activity space. So the activity bell at the top, we'll just go down the list, has all of your activity. So if anyone sends you uh, anything, if you get a message or someone posts something that you're in a team from, it's like a, oh, it's like a blog feed. It's like a Everything, it's just a feed. Everything's there. It's all the things. It's not very sorted. It's kind of like if you have Google Classroom and you have that that front page where all of the, um, uh, it's not the assignments tab, the front Your one. feed? Well, it's not, I can't even remember what it's called in Google Classroom. Now that very front page, it's like that. All the stuff can go there, right? And it's a little overwhelming and it's actually, it, I don't think it's super useful because it's just, there's no organization there, but that's all of the activity. Okay. We're going to look at the chat because that's where we start to get into some really interesting things. So in Microsoft, woo, um, we can see that the chat is, um, we can chat with different people. It's a one-to-one -one chat. So I can type, I can chat with one person in particular. So if Coulter and I were wanting to message, we could message back and forth, or it can also be a one to a few. So if you had, uh, a, let's say you had a science department, you could have a science department chat. And every time you clicked on that chat stream or that chat string, uh, you would get those people and you would have a chat inside of there. So the chat can be one to one, one to a few, and you could have several different chats listed along that left-hand side there. In this particular account, it looks like I only have one going on. So you can add members and groups and you can get all sorts of information about your um, history there. So we're going to go down to the very bottom and take a look at all the different things that we can do in a chat. And so one of the things I can do is I can type an at and I'm going to say uh, Someone should come up here. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't populate for you right away. Well, if you're sending it to yourself, it might not highlight for yourself. I was trying to send it to someone else, but let's see here. Maybe there's another EdTech account that might work. But I, I do love that at feature because it does provide a, a notification for you. It does a little symbol on the left-hand side under chat, which will highlight in red, just letting you know an indication that you have a message directly for you, whether it's okay. an individual me message or a, a group chat. So we'll actually, you know what, we'll come up here. This is why I'm thinking I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong space. So um, instead of, um, I'm gonna come up to the top down. I don't, not, didn't, not sure if you saw that. So I clicked on the little chat icon up at the top. And so now I'm gonna enter another team and I'm gonna pick EdTech 23 here. And I'm going to add, so now this is a conversation with EdTech23. Actually, I think I already had them, new chat. Okay, so we're gonna go EdTech21, and then I'm gonna go EdTech Canada 25. That's the one I want. And I'm gonna add me. So now, I have a whole new chat. So if you can see on the left, there we go. It's a draft. I haven't typed anything yet. 
And along the top, it tells who that chat belongs to. And so now um, I don't need to at someone because I'm specifically chatting with that person. That's why it wouldn't let us. Um, we were thinking of messaging inside of the team, I think is what we were both having, having on the mind there, Coulter. So now I can type a message and I can send it. So that's pretty simple. So now you can see uh, when I click on here, it's going to say a message on the left-hand side. It comes from me. We can do all sorts of great things. We can uh, type in bold. Okay. We can make um, bullet list. We can even add a table. Oops, table, all right, so we can do all sorts of things. We can add um, some highlight colors if we want down here. So we've got a nice um, toolbar where we can add all different sorts of things. So very rich text formatting as we might call that. So this is a chat feature where you can have a strong chat back and forth with the members of this team. Now, when someone else sends me a message, it's going to come on the left-hand side of my screen and you'll see that back and forth. It looks very much like a text string. Um, you see, if I skim over here, I can add some likes. Sometimes administrators might turn these off, but I can add an emoji to the different items on the chat there. So this would be a group chat. I could have a one-to-one -one chat. And then if I have a meeting, so if we had a, later on, we're gonna look at where to, to join a Teams meeting. You will also see the Teams meeting chats in this space as well. So you could click on that and have your whole Teams meeting chat show up in there as well. So that is the chat function. Coulter, let's flip over to that other slide deck and just take a look at some of those little tips there. On, I'll just go over to the next one here. There we go. So just a couple things. Um, the most recent chat appears at the top of your list, but if you would like, you can actually pin a chat to the top there. Um, so let's just take a look at what that would look like. So if we go back to that other desk there, Colts at your deck, if I wanted to take this uh, chat that I just built, I'm going to click and I can pin it. And so it's going to go to the, supposed to go to the top. There we go. I just pinned that up there. Um, actually, my other one, the other one was pinned. And then I just, uh, here, I'm going to unpin that one. There we go. You can also order your pins. So you can drag and order those around. So that's a really neat feature if you want to have um, a chat with the same uh, group, or maybe it's an administrator chat, or maybe it's a, like a, a PLN or the grade three teachers chat. You might want to pin that to the top. And there you go. So that's a really neat tip for the chat feature. Okay, so that is the chat feature. Um, let's see here. So I really like, Cami. how, yep. I mean, I know we're going to get to this already, but already I, I, I'm assuming we kind of have a direction of where we're going and individuals might know that this is like an all-encompassing one-stop shop for everything, including those chat features. And it's really nice because we're kind of eliminating that email back and forth email. Yes, yep. thank you for mentioning that, Coulter. That is exactly the point. And so, you know, and we even kind of jumped ahead a little bit here. Teams itself, what is Teams? Why do we use Teams? We didn't even stop and really address that question. And and I, I meant to, but I kind of skipped over that. So Teams is like, um, it's like your Google Meet and your Google Classroom and your Google Groups. And if you used to use Google Chat, it's like all of those in one plus a telephone. So it's like this super powerful tool and lots of people only use it for one of those things. In my district, most of my people only use the chat and the message function that we're gonna look at inside of a team or they might use it occasionally for video calls. Um, other places only use it as a team uh, classroom platform like you would use Google Classroom. So it's really interesting how it's such a powerful tool, but lots of people don't even use uh, the entire piece. We're gonna go down a little bit here and we're going to go down and look at calls. 
really quickly. So I'm on the call in the me space. I've clicked on the call button. And so this is just really like a phone, um, a phone call. So I can make a phone call on my laptop or um, I would strongly recommend that you get the Teams app. It's great for when you want to connect to a, a Teams meeting on the go or especially for making phone calls. So you can just type your, um, so if I pick my ed tech, one of my EdTech team members, I can just call them. And this would, if they are signed, set up with a phone number, I could call them and then they would answer it on their app, whether it's on the laptop or on their phone, like a, like a telephone call. So if you're all working inside of Teams, that's another great um, use for it there. And so you can see you've got voicemail, you've got a contact list. Mine will be pretty empty in this account. So um, that's the calls feature. And so uh, in my district, the administrators use this a lot or departments, uh, administrative departments really use this as a lot. I find that teachers probably don't use this part as much, but the admin side really, really uses that a lot. Culture, anything that you'd like to add there about calls? Uh, nothing necessarily about calls other than that you mentioned the app, and I, I, I know we'll highlight a little bit more, but uh, even this weekend, I, I had just like an introductory thing with my students, and I was in like a 20-minute line at Costco. I don't know if anyone ever has experienced that before, but I was able to pull out my app and provide just some immediate feedback for some kids that already submitted some work. So I think the, the app is super convenient um, and allows you to still provide that uh, same user interface. So the, the visuals that you see on the screen, it's very similar to what you have on your phone. And it's super convenient to be able to, um, not that we always want to be super accessible to our students and to our classroom, but it is super helpful because I stood there in line and what else am I going to do? So um, it was it was very convenient. And I think that app is, is a great thing. So uh, at some point, we definitely encourage you to download that app. And again, if you're if you're connected to people, um, that calls feature is nice. I don't use that call a lot, although I sometimes get called with the Teams uh, call feature. I'm like, oh, where's that coming from? Oh, my Teams app. So some people use it all the time. I, I When I get a call on the Calls app, I'm a little bit, I have to find where it is. But uh, it's in your Teams app, which is, does I do have that on my phone. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go to the button that says Teams. And so you can see here in the We space, I have a number of teams that I have made. Now, in different districts, um, different districts do this different ways. In my own district, I can join a team, but I don't have um, the permission or the power to create a team. And so depending on your district, you may or may not be able to actually create teams. Some districts, they will create your team or your class for you and push it out so it'll sit on your uh, team space here as a tile. Um, other districts will let you create those on your own. So we have these tiles. We can move these around um, and we can even hide them. So if I didn't want to see this one, it comes to the bottom. So if you have some that you don't want to show uh, in, in case your screen is presenting or something like that, you can have hidden teams there as well. So I'm going to show us how to quickly create a team because we're going to do some work then inside of that team. And I, um, while we're going to spend a lot more time on the assignments part later, I just want you to be able to start off with that team. So I'm going to go to the right hand side and under, uh, there's a little a button at the top right and it says join or create team. Okay. So now you'll see with mine here, I have this first tile that says create a team and I have a button, blue button that says create team. Okay, make that nice and big. So you may not have this button. In my school account, I don't have this button. I only have this one. So when you create, when you click that create or join a team button, if you only get this one, join a team with a code, um, that means you can only join a team. So if you see it, it's a thing. It depends how your district has it set up. We're hoping that for our, our purposes tonight that you will be able to create a team. And we're going to create, click on that. And then we get four different types of teams that we are going to go over really quickly. So the first one that we're gonna look at is a class team. And so teachers own class teams and then we add our students. So think of this team 
very much like Google Classroom. So what you would do in Google Classroom, assign assignments and quizzes, put materials, um, a team inside of Microsoft Teams. Are you with me there? A team inside of Microsoft Teams is where you are going to do your classroom work if you are a teacher. So assignments, quizzes, the student feedback, uh, just like in Google Classroom, you can send private messages. And actually, uh, Teams has some powerful features that we don't have over there in Google Classroom. So uh, you would type in a name. So let's, say, let's call this my classroom team. Okay, I can write a description. And then I can click Next. And it's going to have me um, add students. Now, at this point, um, I'm just going to go back here. And we're going to get into this part later. To, uh, in our next session, we're going to do all these parts. Um, oopsie. We're going to get into that. Right now, we're just going to look at what these different teams are like. So that's a class team. Another one, uh, if you're an administrator, I've just clicked on the staff team. So the staff team is a leader, a school administrator would be an owner, and they then they would allow staff members. So this is great for your staff meeting team or a school team. Um, your principal then can have sections for each staff member that they can view, uh, that the administrator can view, but that others can't. So if you wanted to, if you have to have some files that go with each of your teachers, you could collect them here. Um, you and that staff member, right? So you can have all your staff members, but only each staff member can only see their space. So you can um, communicate with staff members there. You can share documents, but the staff members can't see each other's. So that's a real admin space. Okay. Then we have um, a professional learning community. So this is for educators. And you would add other educators. So you might have a science department team or a distance learning team or a grade three team. And this is where you would do work together. You would collaborate. You can plan. You can share materials. Um, you can put one note notebooks, templates, all sorts of things that you can have in there that you would work together as a team. So that's a, a PLC, uh, professional learning community, personal learning community, however you want to go with that. Um, and then you can see at the bottom that you can have a private team or a public team, okay? So uh, public means that anyone in the organization can join, but often for these PLC teams, they are just private because they're uh, just members of a, a certain team. The last one is other. And this is a really neat one because this is, if you notice, educators or students can create teams. And so this one might be, um, one that you would use with your volleyball team or your chess club or your coding club or your Minecraft gaming club or your esports team or any other kind of team, you can create it and have students join. Or you might also, um, if your administration allows it, your IT admin allows it, you can actually have students create teams to work together. So I would recommend that um, students would only do this for big things like clubs or... Um, you know, kind of things that are like, like a team, right? As opposed to just, uh, we have a project due in a week, let's create a team. There's a different place that I would recommend that teams would work or teams of students would work together, you know, groups of four or five kids for a week or two. And we would do that in a channel inside of our classroom team. So think of these teams as something that's a little bit more permanent, that's going to go on for probably some months or longer, we would want to avoid making teams just for a short little week or two. Coulter, anything you'd add there about any of those teams? No, it's great. Other than sometimes your administration or your IT department will block you from creating your own teams. So if you're unable to do that right now, uh, that's okay. Just send your IT department a quick little email um, asking to, to create a practice team for you or a demo team. And then when you're ready to create your team and add your students, you can do that at a later time. Yeah. So uh, thanks for reminding us of that again. So if that's your case, you won't get this one where it says create a team. You'll only see uh, join a team over here. So if you're only seeing join a team, that means for, for now, you can just, you just have to um, sit tight and watch you won't be able to necessarily click and 
create unless you have a real just quick light link, quick line to your um, IT department, and then they will get you going on that. So we're going to give you a moment right now to create, hopefully create a team. And so we're going to actually, let's uh, put that little instruction up there on that slide. Um, I'm, I might have skipped around a little bit. Let's go ahead, ahead, ahead. Yeah, there we go. That one. And then we'll, we'll go back. I realized that we couldn't do the messaging because we didn't have a team yet. So that's why I skipped ahead, Coulter, if you're wondering what the heck's going on. <laughs> All right. So can you create a team? If you're an administrator in the room, we invite you to create a team. And maybe you're going to create a staff team if you're going to mostly work with staff. If you're a teacher, for sure, try to click a class team. Um, and we are interested in the chat. Are you able to make a team? Do you have the ability? I'm interested if our Abbotsford friends, can you create your own teams? Um, how, do, how does your district have that set up? Any questions in the chat about? Things there. Oh, Sue, did you find the Teams icon? I wonder if you, Colt, are you able to help Sue find the Teams icon? Sometimes if you don't see the Teams icon, it's, there's a little more button or three dots or a little arrow and you have to kind of go in deeper. I think for Sue specifically, I might've read that question wrong. Um, but Sue, if you can't find the Teams icon, actually, my thought was that they just weren't able to, to create the team. Um, oh, if maybe. I... If the team's icon is missing from your full panel, that's the issue uh, to a different account. Okay, so keep us posted. We'll see if we can walk you through. Yeah, so that's, like I said, different boards set that up differently. And so often when we do a team session like this, um, we, we know that you might not have access to all the things we're showing. And that's the thing that we have no control over, you have no control over, um, your IT department will make those decisions. And so what you will know is what you might wanna ask them for. Uh, and they might have a, a rationale over why they aren't giving everyone the ability to make a team. Um, once you do have a team created, it would be helpful for us just for our timing and flow. If you can let us know in the chat, I've got a team and I am, making a class team, or I've made a staff team. Sue, sometimes, yes, a different account might help. <laughs> That's what, when I'm in a session and I can't create a team, then I, I try a private account, and sometimes that works for me. All right, so um, if we go further in the steps, you will also get to create an, it'll ask you to pick an icon. If you have time to try adding some members, go ahead, but we're going to deep dive into that in the next one. So we didn't really show that, but if you want to kind of follow along, you can go ahead. Um, you can also just create the team without adding the members as well. Okay, Andrew. Oh, Andrew's rocking. He has a staff team and a class team. Thank you, Andrew, for letting us know. That's great. Okay, so we're going to keep going. And Coulter, I'm just going to pop back to um, slides here. So this is perfectly where we want to be. Inside of a team, there, there's lots going on. And we're going to take a peek into there. So we have teams. We just created a team. And then there's also channels. So a team is a, a, a bigger group of people that work together to get something done. 
I'm kind of, I've got a little box there, right? Got some points of when we might make a team versus a channel. Um, you get to choose who's part of a team. You can only access the content of a team if you've been invited or given a code or been added by somebody. So you kind of have to get onto a team somehow or create one. And then all teams have what's called a general channel by default, and then a couple other um, pieces that are there automatically. We can also then make channels. And channels are like sub, um, now I'm gonna say not sub teams isn't quite the right word, but imagine, okay, so imagine like this. Teams might be a drawer in your filing cabinet. So you have a whole drawer that's called English language arts or a whole filing cabinet drawer. Does anyone even have filing cabinets anymore? Called math, all right? And then inside of the drawer, you might have folders, right? So you might have your um, fractions unit and you might have your geometry unit and you might have your um, telling time unit. So those units might be things that are channels. Or we mentioned before um, group projects. So you might have a classroom team and then for two or, two or three weeks, you're going to work on um, a project. And so you might have kids and teams that work on the project. So think of team as something that's a little bit more long term, a group of people that's going to stay fairly consistent over time. And their job is to work together to get something done to meet. And then channels are little subgroups that might form on and off within that team. And you can have a channel and then you can delete it if you don't need it any longer. So teams are a little bit more long lasting and permanent. Channels are handy for the moment. They might stick around for a long time, or you might decide we're done with this channel. We're going to delete it to get it out of the way. You can have um, private channels that you can invite specific members to. So let's say you had a research team that was doing um, spiders. You could invite the four kids on the spiders team to a private team, and you could add, add the four students that are doing caterpillars onto a team. And those could be private ones. Um, so those are channels and they'd work in that channel for a while and then they'd be done. Coulter, anything um, you'd like to add about the differences between those two before we dive in and really look at them? Uh, no, other than you can create up to about 200 channels and 30 of those can be private. <laughs> okay. You have lots. I, so it's difficult to run out of channels, but it's also important that you stay organized for yourself and your students. So if you're not using one, maybe remove it. Yeah, I would caution that 200 channels, although it's like much. what you can do and what you should do are often two very different yes. things, right? Yes. <laughs> and so 200 channels, there's probably some good use cases, uh, but generally um, in a classroom setting, that's probably going to be overwhelming and you yep. want to avoid that. I have All about right. uh, 10 that I use, give or take, okay. each year. So I have about max 10 um, throughout the whole year. When we when we pop into that section, uh, Coulter, you can take you can help us out there. So I'm going to go into my teams. Oops, I got that a little big. So I'm going to click on. Uh, we'll go to this one because it's got some stuff in it. This was um, from the last training that I did. Some of you might have been with that one. So here we have. Uh, this team and inside of it, we're going to take a look at what we have here. So along the left hand side, you can see um, the top items came automatically. Most of those things came automatically when I created a classroom team. So the homepage, the class notebook, assignments, grades, and I think Reflect and Insights as well, those showed up automatically when I made a classroom team. So if you made a staff team or a clubs team, you might have some different items at the top here. Then we have channels. Now, your teams will all start off with a general channel. So if I just come back here to this one that I just made, this classroom team, which will be brand new. Um, I'm just going to come into my general channel here. You, you can see there's nothing. There's no channels underneath here. That's how you would start. And so to make a new channel, you would come up to the top and click add channel. And so maybe this is going to be, if I'm an elementary teacher, maybe this is going to be my math channel. And every student 
currently would be added to that math channel because I haven't said it specifically. I could make another add channel and I could make this language arts. I can add a description, of course. Uh, this is a standard channel. So everyone that joins my team will see this one. And if I wanted to make specific people in this team, I would pick private. And then when I click create, it would um, prompt me to pick the people that I wanted to join that channel. Okay, so what we really want to look at for a few minutes is at the bottom, this is probably one of the biggest ways that people, especially I would say in the administrators, secretaries, admin use teams is this message space. So in the we space down here, there's this new conversation button. And this is where Coulter and I were getting mixed up earlier because we were all in a hurry. If I type at here, there we go, edtech. Oh, do you know what? I don't have anybody added to it. I'm going to go back to this team because I have people here. There we go. You see that other class, I didn't have any people added. Ed tech. So I could add a person. Or did you notice I could also add a team? So if you look on the left, I have a ladybug research team. If I type at ladybug, I can add a note to the ladybug research team. And then I want to maybe add something to the butterfly. Doesn't want me to add those. We'll start with ladybug there. Click on the A. We have all of these different items. And we looked at how we could add all sorts of information there. And I just want to just double check on my notes here that, okay, there we go. Um, yeah, okay, good. Um, so in the Teams now, this is a shared space. And so because it's a shared space, one of the things we want to remember is that we have to teach students how to behave in a shared digital space. Sometimes when classes are new to Teams, maybe you saw this when you first started to use Google Classroom or another LMS, um, lots of teachers say, I want the chat turned off. I don't want them to talk to each other. And that's a, you know, one kid says a goofy thing or does something that's inappropriate. And then we wanna, we wanna, sh our instinct is to be safe and shut down. And so I would encourage us that we need to really focus on teaching students appropriate digital skills here. This is something that students are going to need going forward forever. They are always going to need to know how to operate in a digital space. And this is now one of the things that we need to do with students is teach them how to operate in that digital space. And so we can mute kids if we need to. So we'll, we'll take a look at uh, where we would do that. But we, we need to teach students how to be appropriate. Um, we can set here whether people, everyone can reply or if we want it just to be an announcement, I can click only moderators can reply. So that would mean it's just an announcement that goes out and no one can make a comment on that. So um, if you're the teacher or an administrator, you can see where there's times where you just want to give information and you don't want necessarily people to con uh, comment on that. Ah, if I want to post this in multiple channels, this is what I was needing to do before. I was trying to get the butterfly team. There we go. And so I can go by butterfly, ladies, ladybugs, and I can also, so those are channels. I could also add this other team. And then it's going to push this same message out to all of those channels and also different teams as well there. This is Along great. the yeah, bottom. Oh, you teach, sorry, this is great, especially if you teach different cohorts. Like I said earlier, I, I teach the grade two to eight coding program at our school. And um, so there's there's a bunch of different messages that I've kind of got to send through that are similar. Um, and and this is a great little feature to be able to push it all through at once. Yes. And so there's some really neat things that we can do in here. You can see we can 
there's an emoji um, piece that we can add. I actually skipped over probably the most powerful one, and that is the paper clip. So when I clip on, click on that paper clip, you can see here, make that a little bigger, that I can upload something from my computer. I can get something from my OneDrive. Um, and you might not have much in your OneDrive yet. We'll talk in our next session about how to get your items in there. Um, for me, if I clicked on upload from my computer, I have a Google Drive file stream set up. So I could actually even pick items out of my Google Drive right now. Uh, that's my screen share isn't showing you that, but um, anywhere, anything you have on your computer, your desktop, your downloads, you can get from there. Uh, you can even pick things up from other teams and channels by clicking on the browse teams and channels. So this is all of your file structure. I'm actually going to click on my OneDrive just so you can see all the things that would be available there. So um, I don't have a lot in this OneDrive, but you probably have just like in your Google Drive or your other space where you store your cloud documents, files and files and files. You can get that and you can upload anything to attach to a message. Okay, now we can add GIFs. All right, so we can add a GIF. Um, and let's just see here. Why isn't that? Let it be send. There we go. I'll send that. We can add, uh, let's see, we'll do some of these other ones. Videos for Microsoft Stream, which we won't get into. This is a fun little one. We can add a praise. So if we wanted to say that someone was courageous, um, we can type a name. And we can send a nice note. And when I send that note to that person, it's going to come up as a praise. And it's almost like they can collect these badges. So that's just a nice little thing that you can do down here. You can add forms. I clicked on the three dots. You can add other apps like Wakelet or um, Flipgrid. You can add all sorts of other things through these three little dots as well. So there's lots of hidden gems underneath these buttons down here as well. So Coulter, let's give our friends a chance to play with that message feature. Okay. Um, and add some message items. This might not I think it's, I think it's back a bit. It's the earlier one, right? 17, yeah. There we, there we go. go. One back. Two back. There we, go. there we go. Sorry for changing the order on you. No problem. All right. So can you add some colleagues with the at, or can you use that um, edit button to add a whole bunch? Can you add a GIF, a sticker? Can you send a praise? Previously, I showed you how to add charts or bullets to your messages. I really love that it has that rich text formatting. Um, Google Classroom has added that fairly recently, but it still isn't anything compared to what you can do in Teams. You could also add a quick form or a poll. <clears throat> I do like that poll feature or and form feature. They're both great. I think it's just a quick, seamless way that we can add something into our our homepage there, our, our we space, and students can provide instant feed or get instant feedback, and and you can do a quick little uh, scan the room with it. it. It's just a nice quick feature. Mm hmm. So I'll give you. A All right, so um, let's quickly look at adding a meeting. And then we'll look at a couple little um, 
notifications. Coulter, you always remember where those are a lot better than I do. So we'll go back through and add, talk about how to turn off and on some notifications. Uh, can we turn the chat off? Uh, how can we control some of that? We'll go in and do that. So the last thing we're going to do is we've kind of talked all the way around um, our team. Actually, one thing we haven't done is we're going to go up to the look at the top. We can um, add general. So this is general posts. There's also a files. So I can see all of my files. This basically pulls from OneDrive, mostly what's there. Um, now, some of these other ones I've added. So I've added this planner. I've added um, an August OneNote. So this is a class notebook that I've added. So you can add anything you want here by adding a link or one of these apps. So I could click on forms and I could add an existing form. So if I want to make something easily clickable or findable for students that are in my class, I can add additional buttons up here to make things easier to find. So then we're gonna go over to the top right hand corner we're going to look at the meet button. So here is, um, let's just click meet now. So this is where we would schedule a Teams meeting. And I can call this, this is Microsoft, oops, Teams Basics. All right, and we've got all the kind of uh, items that you would expect to find if you've used Zoom or Google Classroom before. Lots of them look, they have the same tools, they just look a little different. So I can get everything all set up here. Um, this is where, on the bottom corner right here, where I would uh, turn off my camera. Okay, so camera off. And then I've got all sorts of background filters that I can choose. Now, do know that when you run those filters, it is does take a little bit more of your computer processor. So sometimes if your computer's slow, you got to turn off that filter. Um, that will help out a little bit. And then when you're ready, you can click join now. And then I can copy that meeting link if necessary. I can add participants if I'd like. And then now we are inside Microsoft Teams. You'll notice that on the left-hand side over here, can you see that I still have my toolbar? I still have my Teams toolbar. You'll see activity, the chat, the Teams, uh, assignments, which we're gonna look at next, the calls button, the files. Um, so I still have all of those me space items. And now at the top, this is my people list, uh, the chat. Uh, we've got some reactions in here so we can um, send some reactions. Look at that heart even beats. Can you see it beating on the screen? I love that. Uh, we can add some apps so I could do a form on the go that's going to post in the chat instantly. Um, turn off my mic and camera, share, and then uh, in the more button, this is where we would um, send a recording or start recording. We can turn live captions on, background effects are there, and there are all sorts of other settings inside of that. And Remember all those pieces that we just looked at with the messages? All of those are available in the message stream. So in other um, tools like Zoom and Google Meet, you can't do very much in the messaging. But in the Teams message, inside of a team meeting, you can add a chart, you can bold, you can add emojis and GIFs, you can add all sorts of things. You can add a form on the fly. And so I really um, like all of those. Kami, could you just click on the three dots there? Oh, I like the important message there, but uh, okay. the bottom, sorry, the bottom three dots. We just oh, want to these ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, messaging extensions. Okay. And then that's where we type in polls. So if you type in polls, so just, just highlighting for Natalie uh, and individuals okay. that might have had difficulty finding the polls, that's where you'd find a poll. Okay. And you can okay. add it in. No, oh, perfect. Natalie's got it. So that, okay. that again, it's found across your team's platform no matter what chat area you're in, whether it's a call or the actual WeSpace chat area, um, you have those functions. So Yes. Um, 
Perfect. And that's so like this, this little part down here, just like we played around in the messaging section under our chat or under our message in our team space. Um, I love it because it's very similar. So I'm going to leave here and hang up. There we go. Now, watch this. If I come back to activity, um, my little meeting should show up right here. So in my chat space, it says, how was your uh, meeting? I'll say it was good. If I had an attendance report, I think someone was asking in the um, chat about attendance report. It should auto generate right here. Um, and then that is where we would find that. Okay. Uh, let's look at our notifications. So first of all, managing our channel, um, we can set it so anyone can post messages, only owners can post messages. So that's one thing you can do. Um, the analytics are incredible and the insights. Um, I want to just let you know that they are there and they're incredible. We're not going to have time to go into those tonight. That's kind of a, certainly a next level. Sorry, um, Cammie, could you just show us where you found those channel settings one more time? Yes. Please? Okay. So I clicked on, uh, let's go back here. Nope. I was under general. So channel notifications, manage channel. Okay. So that's where I was. And then. I also want to click on settings. So under settings, if you like the dark look, you can change your contrast. So this is where students can really get into um, making it their own. Uh, notifications is one thing that we always want to really look at here. So you can notify how often um, you get act messages about activity. And so this depends on how you use Teams, what kind of traffic you have. Do you want a daily update? Do you want to know within an hour that someone sent you a message? Do you need to know as soon as possible? Um, sometimes I try it out and it's like, whoa, that's way too much. And then I need to turn it down or I find that I'm missing messages. I'm not getting them in time. And so depending on kind of the work that I'm doing, sometimes I, I change this here. Um, this is a really important one. Play sound for incoming calls and notifications. So I have that turned off. Otherwise, every time someone posts a message, you get a little ding. That was the one that we were finding that other week we were together, wasn't it, Coulter? Yeah, that was. That's um, and and that's one of the ways you can mute it. But there's the other way too, with going directly to your chat and right-clicking your chat and muting the chat. Okay, and we'll look at that as well. Under chat here, there's edit. So this is where. Um, the chat will come in or you can turn it right off. So that chat setting, oops, there we go. Um, I was Candy, this is just a friendly reminder that we're, we're coming to an end. I know there's so okay. much we want to show, but this is just keeping yes. you on. It is. I thought, yes. So thank you, Coulter. We kind of got right to where I wanted. Um, this, accounts piece right here would be where you would personalize your account. So the last thing, if you wanted to uh, personalize your profile, you would come and this is where you would change your uh, icon and personalize what that looks like. So Coulter, let's go back to the end of that slide deck. You can pop that on and I'll get to the right slide. Okay, so we added channels, we did all that, Teams meeting, profile, okay, and yeah, there we're at the end. At the very end of our slide deck, which I did not happen to go in order of, the information's all there, we just uh, moved around a little bit. Um, we have some great additional resources for you. These are all sorts of quick links, uh, start guides, they've got a great interactive guide, YouTube channels, um, there's great learning out there that you can do Asynchronous, asynchronously on your own, um, a bunch of great resources there. And Coulter uh, is probably putting in the chat a feedback link for you and uh, the link to the slide deck again. If you have any questions at all, uh, help at cobblestonecollective.ca. We have 
help minions at cobblestone and uh within 24 hours or sooner often they will get back to you uh with some answers to your questions if you have new questions about getting into teams awesome cami that was great and thanks everyone for joining i have posted in the chat um some links to our uh, slide deck again for today a quick little evaluation our help email at any point you're part of our cobblestone community now um feel free to send us a, a help question about anything ed tech we're here to help you uh, and again join us for more workshops uh, we are here for you uh, you can also put in that feedback form some specific stuff that you'd like to learn more about we build workshops for you so um, we're happy to listen to what you'd like to learn more about and we're happy to build workshops around that um, we have this series continuing we have part two coming up right uh, next and then uh, part three and four will be in uh, uh, next week and the following week and we hope to see everyone there so thanks again for joining us uh, this recording this is a recording and we are happy to uh, share that with you eventually um, but you can re-watch this use that slide deck and go through things at your own pace and again thanks so much and we hope to see you again soon have a great day